Okay, welcome everybody to the March 23rd Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, before we start uh, down the agenda for tonight, I'd like to review a couple things. First of all, um, <clears throat> Our next meeting in April will be in person at the town hall. Uh, the uh, uh, administration, town administration has uh, stated they'll begin public meetings in the town hall, I guess with the uh, um, hearing on the uh, their comprehensive plan that's the 29th, but in general, it's uh, April 1st and afterwards is what they plan to do. Now, uh, some of you may have heard, I just heard last night myself that uh, tonight at the same time that we're having our meeting, uh, the Rod and Reel is holding a comprehensive plan expo at the 1936 uh, restaurant. So, uh, uh, what's that? Are they convinced, trying to convince people of the rightness of their position? Is that what it is? or? I have no idea other than they are hosting it and have invited uh, people to participate with them. Uh, they didn't invite me. Uh, <laughs> or so, me. So I, I don't know. I don't know what their agenda is or what their plan is, but you and I can probably guess. In any case, I uh, just wanted to let you know that that was happening. Um, in the last uh, month, we've had a number of, uh, uh, at least from my point of view, questions about the Open Meetings Act. So uh, I just wanted to review that again for those that have forgotten. Um, section uh, 290-31, subparagraph three of the town zoning code says that all commission meetings shall be open to the public. Uh, that's they don't provide, the law does not provide any exceptions to that. Now, <clears throat> on October 21st of 2020, that's almost a year and a half ago, our town administrator sent an email to all of us, all the commissioners, uh, which said, uh, and I quote, one topic that can be an unintended violation of the Open Meetings Act is holding a discussion via email to a quorum of commissioners. I would suggest sending items directly to uh, Larry, the chairman, uh, or Fran, now Sh Sharon, rather than sending to all commission members to avoid that issue. Uh, she sent that email out. I've repeated it a couple of times. I know uh, I, I certainly believe that any uh, possible uh, violations of that have been unintended, but uh, I also would like to add that Maryland has an opens, open meetings compliance board uh, that frequently or periodically publishes their opinions. If you wanna look up the citation, it's nine OMCB opinions 259, where they say inadvertent violations of the open meetings law through the use of electronic communications can be reduced if electronic mail is used principally to transmit information one way to a body's membership. If the originator of the message reminds recipients to reply only to the originator, if at all, and if message recipients are scrupulous in minimizing the content and distribution of their replies. Now, uh, I would ask you to uh, work with me on this. And if you have things you wanna send, send it to Sharon, send it to me, uh, if we think it needs to go to the commission uh, or it needs to wait until the next public meeting, 
uh, we'll certainly try and um, facilitate whatever it is you're promoting or asking, but we all need to comply with the law. And uh, I think I've stated the law verbatim. Um, so uh, with that little exercise, uh, let me uh, ask if there is a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. I second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, is there any, any discussion of the agenda before we go on? We... Um, uh, Mr. Brown, may I uh, just add one more thing, if I may, uh, for a second? Uh, yeah, so, yes, go ahead. I, I just wanted to make a comment that um, I know with, with what you're talking about, um, I'm concerned that um, there were some things that I thought were left out of the agenda that indeed were really not left out. Sharon did a great job of actually um, summarizing, but that I have to remind myself and others that we need to make motions if we do want them in the agenda for the next for the next session. So that we have to remind ourselves that we need to make motions if we want to see them in uh, the minutes um and proceed then to the next agenda if we need to but at least to see them in the in the minutes so and, and sharon has been doing a great job it's an admirable job because this is a not an easy thing to to take minutes of so thank you sharon for all the hard work you're doing on the minutes i just wanted to add that and i would i would add that motions that commission business has to be done during a public meeting and not by email so if you have something you want to suggest, you can send that to Sharon. You can send it to me. But please don't send your uh, emails on commission business to all the other commissioners. And in particular, for those of you that have done this, have added extra people like uh, town administration and um, uh, council members and other persons that are not on the commission, it just uh, ruins my day when I get that stuff. So, <clears throat> I, so I appreciate your cooperation. Um, so we have a motion to approve the agenda. All, all were in favor. So let's uh, move on to the next item. Approval of the minutes for the February 23rd planning and zoning meeting. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Chairman Brown? Yes. Um, I'd like to ask for a, a point of clarification in regard to the minute. Okay. Um, in the in the minutes, it shows. Uh, I guess it's under item six. Um, remove all references to the bonus density overlay, but um, yet in the the zoning, the proposed zoning ordinance amendment, the bonus density overlay appears. And I thought it was to be removed. And I just wanted that clarification. Well, it is, well, that's what we recommended in the comprehensive plan, I believe. Uh, I'd have to look at what that item is. Let me see if I can bring it up. Uh, so what uh, what paragraph is that? It's it's amendment three that it appears the bonus uh, density appears again in the under the um, proposed zoning ordinance amendment, but it's item under item six on the the minutes. It's the uh, the second item or I guess the third, including items in item six, then after that two down from it, it says remove all references to the bonus density overlay district in their entirety. But yet in the amendment under um, <laughs> amendment three, it shows up. Well, I believe uh, that is going to be addressed again 
uh, and the, uh, uh, a list of things that uh, our zoning administrator has for us to consider and, and that'll be done in more detail. Is that correct, Chris? Yes, in fact, it's already, it's already been done, but we're working off of this, um, you know, this sheet. And um, so uh, we've just left it on there, but we, as you can see, Amendment 3 shows it being removed. So it's entirely consistent with the decision you made prior. It, this is just a kind of running uh, tally of the, the amendments as you've gone through. So it's okay. this is not meant to suggest it's an amendment we have to even consider again. It's already been dispatched with. Thank you. Yep. It has been dispatched by motion, correct? The, we have motioned and approved the removal of the bonus density overlay in its entirety, correct? Uh, the both motion. Huh? The bonus density has uh, been removed in its entirety, correct, Chris? Yeah, I'm just looking for the, um, the minutes and... Um... The minutes do not say that, but I am under the understanding that we have done that several times. Yeah. yeah I, I kind of think we have to multiple times. In yeah, fact, me too. Previously, the Planning Commission recommended uh, zone, uh, the building height standards and this was an element of that that was this was a subset of those changes regarding building height um so it's it's been done with by motion a while ago and it's just um but if you want to more formalize uh, update your motions we can certainly do it again um, but it's, it's i think no, we should do it again because the building height is one thing but that overlay has a lot of other elements to it and we had agreed to remove it in its entirety. So. Well, it's clear that it's, uh, it's to be removed. So if there's any, uh, I don't know where there's any uh, real discussion of that point. Well, I think some of the council people are going by the minutes and not necessarily by what they hear over and over again in our meetings. So if they don't see- Well, we are going to propose changes to the zoning code and changes to the map. And that will include that the bonus density is eliminated. So the minutes will, will be, uh, I'll say, uh, relatively irrelevant because we will send a resolution to the town with our proposed changes to the zoning code. And uh, if it's not in those changes, then I can see where there might be some confusion. But right now, the intent is that it will be in the, in the, change the zoning code. And Mr. Chairman, my, I just might add that um, <clears throat> The, the planning commission will get a chance to vote on all the amendments following its public hearing. So while you're voting and making motions on these, there would be a public hearing uh, on this and the zoning map um, that you would hold and then you'd make your final determination um, following that. Yeah, I understand that, but we keep revisiting some things that we have put to bed over and over again. And you, so will somebody show me, sharing, will somebody show me please where the confusion is? Cause I don't, I don't see it in what I'm looking at. So the confusion is that we have an amendment three that we're considering. No, no, I'm not looking for your solution. We have a question that it hasn't been addressed. And, okay. and I wanna see where it says that we're including the bonus density in the future because what i read on the minutes is remove all references to the bonus density overlay district in their entirety mr jubiak jacobiak stated mm -hmm. this comes with two amendments one to repeal section <laughs> article 4 290-15 bonus density mm -hmm. overlay district in its entirety and renumber the remaining sections accordingly and two remove all references wherever it appears in the zoning ordinance. 
Commissioner Blackwell, there suggested, rather than renumbering the remaining sections, just leave it marked reserved. Mr. Jakubiak concurred with that suggestion and also noted that the zoning map lifts all references to the bonus density overlay district. So I don't know where the confusion is. Well, the confusion yeah. chairman me, and maybe it's just, forgive me, but uh, I then see an amendment three, I saw the bonus density uh, overlay district in there. And I, and so if, if the reference in the minute are you talking uh, amendment three of of the minutes? No, I'm talking amendment three under where we have building height. It says planning and zoning commission proposed zoning ordinance amendment. And then it reads building height in the town of Chesapeake Beach. And it starts with amendment one, amendment two, and then there's amendment three, which again references um, the bonus density overlay district. Okay, um, you're, you're talking about tonight's business. We haven't uh, we haven't gotten to that yet. We're talking uh, the okay. thing. What's on the uh, table right now are the minutes from the February meeting. And do we have uh, any corrections to those minutes that have to be made before we approve them and can get gone to tonight's business? Uh, Chairman Brown. Yes, Commissioner Rutke. Um, I, I need a clarification. On the minutes, item number six, uh, the town council is requesting additional information from us. One of which is they wanna see all the decisions that were not unanimous. Is that something that we're gonna send them and, and what? Okay, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> our uh, uh, clerk Sharon Hum has gone through all of the minutes dating back to June of 2000 and, and uh, copied all uh, verbatim out of the minutes where there was not unanimity among the commission. She's put those into a list that list has been provided to the town council. Uh, it's, it's a verbatim list out of the minutes. So that's already been done. Oh, it just, okay. I apologize then for not bringing it up sooner, but it seems potentially very divisive. What's very divisive? That we weren't unanimous? No, that they wanna know, I think who did and who didn't. Well, that's, uh, it's in the minutes, it's a, a public record. It's not something that uh, we, that was invented to answer their question. It was, uh, they could have done that themselves, but we, they asked us if we would do it. And so it was uh, pulled right out of our minutes. Okie doke. Okay. All right, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the February meeting? Yes, I'll make a motion to approve for them. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, all in, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes from the February meeting, say aye, please. Aye. aye. Okay, it's unanimous, uh, the motion passes. All right, moving on to, uh, let's see. What's the next item? I have to get my agenda up here. Continue. Oh, public comment. So any members of the public that would like to comment on tonight's agenda, uh, you have uh, two minutes. I see no hands in the air. Um, Chairman, I'm sorry. We do have a, a hand, um, a Gretchen. Okay. You would go ahead. You have uh, two minutes. Chairman, um, I 
was debating whether to go to the meeting tonight at 1936 or to participate in this public forum, which I think is the right thing to do. I will say that um, the fact that that was advertised well in advance and I only saw the agenda for today's meeting today via email, not saying it wasn't out there before, but I do think that getting um, having a forum where there is more information available to the public rather than just discussion of, um, you know, the technicalities of the commission, which are very important to accomplishing what you need to accomplish, but not necessarily informative to what the residents are um, really interested in is, is an important thing. And, um, and that is also in person, which I think would be um, advantageous uh, to, to a important topic like this. Thank you. Chairman? Yes. Chairman, can I get Gretchen's full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Gretchen Rager, R A G E R. Uh huh. Address? And I'm at 8727 C Street. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Gretchen. Uh, I think all of us agree with you that uh, we don't normally respond to public comments, but I will to this one because we have had a public hearing on the comprehensive plan and we've, uh, our, our commission meetings have been open to the public. Uh, they are all public meetings, but uh, also the town council is holding their hearing next week on the 29th and uh and that will be in person as you suggest uh would be a good idea uh i'm sure you're familiar with the covid business that's been going on that's kept us from having in-person meetings and uh uh it is what it is i regret it but that's it is what it is but hopefully you'll be able to participate uh however you want in person or, or by phone, because it both will be provided next week at the uh, town council's public hearing. And, uh, and they'll be uh, very interested in your comments and your observations. So thank you very much for being here tonight. I hope that this is useful to you as we go through our, our business. Thank you. Okay. Um, Moving on, we're going to continue discussion of the zoning ordinance changes for uh, our public that's listening. The uh, last chapter of the comprehensive plan uh, is titled Implementation. The implementation section lists a lot of uh, things that uh, uh, we, the commission, have recommended be done in Chesapeake Beach, but I would, uh, I would encourage you, uh, those I think are the most important ones, but there are others uh, embedded in the comprehensive plan. I, I made a list, uh, something like, um, gee, uh, uh, 61 recommendations that I count in the uh, comprehensive plan that are uh, in various places that don't show up in that last chapter, because the last chapter is the primary, primary ones, leading off with those changes that we feel that we recommended, we have recommended to the town council uh, be undertaken uh, immediately or very, or concurrently with uh, implementation of the uh, comprehensive plan. They include text amendments and zoning map changes. Uh, there are 11 specific text amendments uh, that we address. For example, the first one on the list, and these are on page 121 and 122 of the comprehensive plan. Uh, the first bulleted 
uh, recommendation is to reduce the allowable maximum building height to 35 feet. We'll discuss that this evening, along with uh, uh, all the others. Uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can. And it also includes uh, zoning map amendments, which uh, we said should be adopted and that the town council should adopt an updated map concurrent or soon following the adoption of the comprehensive plan. And there are five of those listed. And the first one being divide the residential village district into two separate districts, uh, which we called RV1 and RV2. Uh, so if you haven't had a chance to read the comprehensive plan, I would encourage you to do that. What we are going to try and deal with this evening is to complete a review of those immediate term text amendments and the zoning map amendments that uh, we hope the town council will uh, review concurrent with their review of the comprehensive plan. I know that at least uh, one council person has, has asked that they uh, look at both at the same time so they can understand not only the, comp the 100 page comprehensive plan we put together, but also how it will be uh, converted into law, into the zoning code. And uh, so they would like to see it all as one package. So with that, what I would like to do is turn it over to uh, our zoning administrator to uh, begin going through the uh, changes that he has put together uh, that would implement those sections of the uh, uh, comprehensive plan. So Chris. Okay, thank you. Um, well, um, we've seen these before and in, at the last meeting there was a lot of discussion and, uh, and I've attempted to uh, using the minutes incorporate the changes that um, seem to be agreed upon and there still may be need to read each one carefully. But let's start with um, the set of zoning changes under the heading new zoning districts and purpose statements. Um, remember this is starts with amendment one and it amends the purpose statements for the RV1 and the RV2 zoning categories. And um, the commission really didn't like the way it was formulated before. And so I, I took some effort to revise it. And that first one is for RV1 is up for your consideration. Um, the residential village district dash one. Um, so uh, uh, can I have a motion uh, to approve amendment one? If we have a motion and a second, then we'll go on to discussion. I'll move it. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, discussion. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, who shall we start with? How about, uh, I see Commissioner Greengold has her hand in the air. Commissioner Greengold. Uh, this is the one particular amendment change that I think I, we talked about last time and I should have made a motion then and I didn't, I regretted it because it didn't transfer over. But I know that we talked about removing the word primary. Um, because we wanted to protect primarily single family. We wanted to just have to protect the single family residential character and then take out primarily again when just saying allowing detect. Um, and then, I'm sorry. Um, and then well, how did we ever get detached houses? I, I didn't think we were gonna allow de de detached houses. I mean, I'm sorry, it is detached. So taking out primarily both in the first part of the sentence and then the second part of the sentence. So it would um, keep the character of that single family uh, residence intact in that RV1 area. I'll second the removal of primarily. 
Okay, uh, so we have a motion to amend by deleting primarily from uh, paragraph E and F on your screen. Uh, no, just no, just E. I'm so, we're just dealing with E, right? Just E, just the RV one. Yes, yeah, that's right. To. That's right. So we're just referring to E. So it would just be RV one. We're talking about the um, removing primarily before a single family residential character, and then taking out the primarily before detached houses. Okay. So is that the uh, second that you had? Yes. You that, that, oh, yeah. I yes, it is. Lori seconded. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of making that change? Aye. Aye. All right, anyone opposed? All right, so uh, four commissioners uh, uh, voted yes, it, motion passes. All right, any further discussion on this, uh, this uh, amendment here? The second amendment, uh, a part of this is uh, RV-2, Residential Village 2. So it's the uh, some additional wording uh, to fill out that purpose statement. Okay, is there um, uh, any further discussion? Um, Commissioner Greengold. Um, I don't think that we had and densities in there prior to this. This seems to be a, an added, an addition that I don't uh, recall. I looked in the previous um, uh, areas. We didn't have anything about densities. I'm concerned that we have a variety of housing types and densities. We're talking about possible raising of blocks and putting in huge um, multifamily apartment buildings and whatnot. So I'm concerned that putting a variety of housing types and densities uh, takes this to a different level. Uh, and, I, you know, going back into RV2, it's really mostly single family homes. And yes, we do have a few townhomes, but uh, I just am concerned that we could really change the entire character if we keep in the and densities. Um, so that is one thing I would like to remove. And then when it says certain non-residential uses, I'm also concerned about putting that in there because uh, when, it look, when you put in certain non-residential uses, uh, I think we could be opening a barn door that would be hard to close again. I think it just opens us up and I'm not even sure we even need to have that in there uh, since we know that um, we are allowing um, in-home uses that are already there, I'm not sure that we wanna add uh, a possibility of enlarging the non-residential uses situation. Uh, that's just a comment I have and I'm not ready to make a motion, but I, that's just a comment that I'd like some other feedback on that. All right, anyone else uh, have a comment? Commissioner Brawl? Um, I agree with, um... Commissioner Greengold, especially in particular with the certain non-residential uses, um, I, I do think that opens it up to um, other options and considerations. And I, I think we don't we want to we don't want to leave it that abstract. Chris, are there currently non-residential uses in that area? There are uh, some, yes, um, not many. Uh, the The language that uh, is being discussed is in the current zoning um, ordinance and the current zoning ordinance allows a, a variety of non-residential uses, um, a substantial can, amount actually. Uh, so can are, you identify Are there that? also, uh, 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 other than single family homes in that area? Yeah, there are townhouse uh, developments uh, in that area. Um, there are a number of accessory apartments. Um, I can't recall how many, but uh, five, 10 perhaps. Um, 
maybe more in some of the, the houses, the older houses, they're non-conforming. Um, uh, I just want to mention too, uh, Cindy, the, the word densities is in the current um, uh, RV description in the, the zoning ordinance. Um, so that's, again, as I mentioned prior, I kind of took a soft touch to these, trying to keep them essentially the same, but incorporating language that would address what the new plan is calling for. But so I just wanted to say that the densities isn't something I added, um, that it was in, in the current draft. So, or the current I code. Can I make a system. comment? Can I make a comment, Chairman Brown? Uh, Commissioner Blackwelder. Thank you. Um, so, when we brief this residential village to the public, both you, Chairman Brown, and Chris, you often do this, and it's been done to our board. You brief the area as we are recommending no change. And now I know that that means you're, you're recommending no change to the code, but the code allows an awful lot as it currently sits. And so when you, rec when you say that you're recommending no change to middle subdivision or Cox Road or some of these RV2 areas, that is confusing the public and they don't understand that you are really saying we are going to continue a lot to allow this area to be redeveloped at a certain density. Um, and so my comment is when you do brief this plan to the town council in front of the public so that the public can understand, um, you shouldn't be bringing, briefing it as no change. No change is, and then the other thing is the, the selectivity of the non-conforming use. So a non-conforming use that has no change would be an example of the old Mama Lucia's, which is now a restaurant again, right? That's, that's a no change. People see a restaurant, it's not being changed. It's still a restaurant. When you say no change about residential village too, it's not the same thing. And you're really misleading people when you say that. Um, and second, I, I, I would like to make a motion to uh, edit this description in the way that Cindy described. So my motion is to remove and densities and certain non-residential uses that are compatible with the prevailing residential character um, remove that portion of it. That's my motion. <clears throat> I you, second uh, it. You just uh, for clarity, say again what you want delete, what you're making a motion to delete. I am making a motion to delete. The word and densities. and certain non-residential uses that are compatible with the prevailing residential character. So then it would read uh, accommodating a variety of housing type and to encourage and facilitate redevelopment and infill that is compatible in use, scale and impact with residential use and existing existing pattern of building streets and blocks? That is, yes, that's my motion. And I make that motion being fair to what was already decided. We all know that my motion was to retain that area as built um, on several occasions, but that motion did not I'll second. I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh... Uh, Commissioner Greengold, anything else you want to say? No, I, I'm good with this motion. Commissioner Baralt, any further comment? No. Uh, Commissioner Rutke, any further discussion? No, nothing, nothing additional. Okay, all in favor of making that change, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we can move on, I believe, to 
Amendment two on this rolling up the screen as I speak. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Want to, Sharon, are you there? Say yeah. that again, Chris. I wondered if Sharon is available. Yes, Sharon's on. Yeah. Can you just uh, quote from the minutes what uh, of these has been approved already by the Planning Commission, if what any? The what has, I'm sorry. The, the commercial what? district purpose statements. I've got a number of files okay. open. I can't flip through it. Uh, the, which one? Neighborhood commercial district. The neighborhood, the, the commission had no object, uh, objection to that purpose statement that you presented last meeting. Okay. Is that what you mean? Good. So everybody good with that one? I, I, I just want to expedite this a little bit, Mr. Chris? Chairman. Yeah. Um, I have a there, there was a typo in there and I, I shared it with Sharon. Um, uh, I, I just wanna make sure that that typo has been corrected after it says uh, the second sentence, well, I guess it's the third, but it says, and low impact commercial uses that are designed and it should be and, A-N-D, not A-N. Got it, thank you. Okay, moving on to paragraph H. Okay, which is town commercial district. Uh, <coughs> I believe what this was decided to, uh, Sharon, can you just verify that? Uh, for the town uh, for the town commercial district, uh, the commission had concerns relating to the wording of non-residential <coughs> statement. And you were to modify and present at this meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, so I struck from that section, the following words that I just highlighted there. Um, so you yep. intended to provide locations for commercial and eliminating and other non-residential. Chris? Okay. Uh, any comment? Chairman Brown? Commissioner Brawl. Um, Yes, and in that second sentence, I'd like to replace the word compatible with harmonious. Okay, so you're making a motion to change the word compatible to harmonious, why? Uh, because I think harmonious uh, implies it's more in conjunction with um, what's already there. And, and also that it would also be similar. I think it's, it's more <laughs> than compatible. Do we have a second to Commissioner Baralt's motion? I'll second. Okay. Um, any discussion, Commissioner Greenville? Uh, then are you wanting to go back to the neighborhood commercial district and do the same for the other one? Uh, Sharon, uh, I mean, uh, Kathleen, are you talking about all the uh, compatible words you want changed to uh, make it all continue? Her, on, her only motion is to change uh, paragraph H that we're discussing right now. If we want to make another motion, we'll make another motion. But the one we're considering right now is paragraph okay. H, the town commercial district. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Blackwelder. Uh, I agree with Kathleen. It's it's stronger in a way that um, is helpful and it's an easy change to make. So I fully support it. Commissioner Rutke, any comments? Uh, I support it as well. I, it's a it's a better word to use there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there's no further discussion. All in favor of changing the word compatible to harmonious? Say aye, please. Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to what should be Commercial Plaza, paragraph H. CP, not TC. Sorry, the commission had no objection to this purpose statement last meeting. 
Thank you, Sharon. Okay. All right, should be, you need to reverse that, don't you? Commercial plaza, not plaza commercial. Uh, okay, so is there any uh, observations anybody wants to make about this paragraph before we move on to the next? Um, can I just have one, uh, one thought about that? Um, it says for larger format locally serving retail uses, do we need the word locally in there? I'm trying to figure out why the word locally is in there. It seems uh, kind of cumbersome in there. And then put a comma after format, larger format comma serving re retail uses such as, it just seems uh, locally, uh, do we need the word locally in there? Chris? Yeah. Well, the, uh, the intent where there was to differentiate it from um, big box uh, stores or um, other regional um, serving like a mini warehouse or a warehouse and facility or, or stores that would draw from a large area and, and, and require a substantial amount of parking. And in other words, it was more akin to keeping the, the the district in the same oh, way as it currently right. exists. Okay. That, that's all. All right. It's okay. All right, moving on. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Barral. Um, the word sustain, um, I don't know. Uh, I feel like the word maintain would be more better represents what we're what we're our statement than sustain as in um i don't know uh, sustaining it, to me implies that we're bolstering um the the shopping location whereas i i think maintain better conveys what the meaning but for me are you making a motion to change sustain to maintain that's correct yes do we have a second a second for discussion all right uh commissioner rutke are you i'm sorry i didn't have my hand up did i need to do something no no we're just going we're in the discussion of uh whether to change the word sustain to maintain in that paragraph and uh, give it. Yeah, I, I rather like the, uh, the new word maintain. Okay, uh, Commissioner Blackwelder. I think maintain is appropriate in the sentence. Okay, uh, Commissioner Greengold, any further comment? Hearing none, all in, all in favor of changing it from sustain to maintain, please say aye. 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 And, uh, that was uh, Commissioner Greengold and, and Barol both said aye. Is that correct? Yeah, sure. Correct. All right. Motion passes. Moving on to paragraph J, Juliet. Okay, this one. Uh, got a real wholesale uh, review and, and update um, led mostly by uh, Commissioner Greenwald Gold's input. And so it's, it's essentially rewritten and I kind of presented it at the last meeting, but um, you know, it was sort of, we were just cobbling it together. So here it's presented in its, in its full array. Um, comment, Chairman Brown. I think, I think first thing we need to have a colon after the thought with the following, and then you should have a colon, correct? Can we, uh, can we first get a motion and a second? Oh, and then sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll move to approve. Okay, we have a second. Second, second. discussion. All right, now discussion, Commissioner Greengold. Um, I would like to put the colon in after the following. And I do understand, Chris, that the four um, uh, 
the four comments below are already in our plan. So those are not, we don't need to change those at all. Even though uh, the wording of diversity of maritime and water related commercial uses kind of seems a little wordy, but you know, it, it, I think it's, it's pretty complete as far as giving everybody the idea of what we're looking at as in the Marine, uh, the maritime district. Um, I would like to, to make it to comment against that a little bit because last meeting we did agree to remove the first bullet. And I think, um, Cindy, you rightly had a, a concern with the words um, commercial uses and intensities. And then I pointed out that if we were to consult this as a matter of code and law and consider those words intensities, then the comparable building would be the rod and reel with the parking garage and the whole nine. So after that discussion, we did right. agree. I have no idea if it's in the minutes, but we did agree to remove the first bullet. And I do think it's important to do so because I, I don't think we want to be uh, legally challenged about whether we're permitting densities comparable to the rod and reel. So I would like to make the motion to remove the first bullet. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, discussion of removing uh, that first bullet. Anyone have comments? Commissioner Greengold? I, I think we did discuss that. And I, I thank you, Lori, for bringing that up. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Brawl. Um, can someone refresh? Uh, my memory about um, why we felt the need to remove it. Kathleen, I think the concern was that the, the intensities, when we're saying... Uh, the words are promoting <laughs> diversity, not intensity. Right, right. Promoting diversity of maritime and water related commercial uses and intensities. And so that leaves it open to all intensities. And it's, it's my understanding that comprehensively we've been trying to reduce intensity. We've been recognizing that the code that was put in place and kept in place for a long time in our town has been over intense and not favored by the public um, and not really um, well serving to continue in that intense fashion going forward. And so um, to eliminate that situation where we, we might be asked to use this district description as a matter of law, as a comparable feature, we removed it. <clears throat> are so you equating, Commissioner Blackwell, are you equating uh, maritime and water related commercial uses with what the Rod and Reel does with their gambling hotel and uh, restaurants? No, Are Chairman, I'm, I'm equating the intensity of that parcel with the future intensities of other parcels. And it's the intensity, I mean, the, the use is, is a different question as well, a matter of code. But right now, I would like to remove the reference to the intensity out of this bullet by eliminating the bullet. Okay, so we have a, a one motion. The primary motion is to remove the bullet entirely. Your amendment, Commissioner Blackwelder's amendment is just to remove end intensities. Is that correct? My motion was to remove the bullet, and I guess somebody else, if they wanted to put some of the bullet back in, they could make a motion for that. All right, so, all right, so, uh, Commissioner Rutke, you have uh, observations, Me? comments? Well, <clears throat> I think the use of intensities and referring to the, the waterfront is confusing. I, I think it's open to uh, debate and discussion and I don't think we wanna go down that path. So I agree that it should either come out or the and, and intensities at the very least should be removed. 
Yeah, it seemed, well, it seems, seems to me that's the only bullet that has, that refers to maritime and water related uses in what we're titling as the maritime commercial district. So, uh, uh, would you like to make a motion? Whole to bullet seems to me to be uh, overkill. But anyway, that's what we have. We have a motion on the floor. No one's made a motion just to remove or to amend the motion and just to remove an intensity. So the motion on the floor. Is I'll, to I'll make, I'll make an amendment. Bullet. So uh, is Commissioner Greengold, you had something to say? I, I, will, I will make a, a secondary motion to, um, to just delete and intensities. All right. Uh, I think we've discussed it quite a bit. So, uh... Chairman Brown. All right, Commissioner Baralt. I, I hate to I hate to do this, but by saying promoting the diversity of maritime and water related commercial uses, uh, what you're saying is you're going to entertain various commercial uses and just taking out the intensities. I think doesn't doesn't address what you're trying to accomplish here, which is basically saying we want to we don't want to allow for um, and encourage further development, um, especially of you know that isn't um, there right now by by. Keeping the word diversity, it, it seems to me we're entertaining various dense in, intensity that we're trying to remove. I I, I think we have well, to we... remove the whole bullet. Okay. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will remove my um, amendment. I'll remove my secondary amendment. All right. So the motion to remove the entire bullet from what used to be called the Maritime Commercial District. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes unanimous. Uh, moving on. That is that entire bullet goes away. We change the name of the district. What's that? Should we consider a change to the zoning district name? No. Uh, no, no, because we talk about, we talk about in the second bullet, promoting active, vibrant commercial activity. So I don't think we need to change the name of it. I agree. And it's in the beginning of the, the, yes. the preliminary part of the book, before the bullets, it talks about it exactly. right there. So exactly. it describes it, it describes it well. <clears throat> okay, amendment three, Chris. Yeah, this is an amendment that, um, updates the resource conservation district. Um, I think we've got this right and I, the planning commission approved this um, as it's drafted. Um, and I, I believe Sharon, you would agree with that? <clears throat> I believe the minutes uh, passed that at the last- uh... Yeah, the commissioners unanimously yeah. agreed. So the, the thing was that this, Part was all added, and I, I believe the commissioners. If you, if if I'm wrong, uh, let me know. Um, agree to these various changes, which you saw already. Okay. Does anybody object to that? I do have a comment. You have uh, a comment or an objection? I'll call it an objective, uh, an <laughs> objection. <laughs> all right. Um, Why? We discussed on many occasions the the distinction between um and the placement of residential uses in areas not suitable for such development and uses and so i just want to confirm what we decided there because if we're going to put a c in the land use table i'm fine with that staying in there but if we're not gonna put a C in the land use table, then we should take it out. 
So. What is it? <laughs> on to avoid intense development and the placement of residential uses in areas not yes. suitable where, where for are such you reading development. It? The center of the district description after the word bay. Right. Well, let, let Chris highlight it so we can all follow along. Okay. Uh, you see it now? I just highlighted it. Uh, you go back about four words, right? To avoid intense development. Is that part of it? Oh, okay. That too. Yes. Got um, it. And keep highlighting all the way to until you get to the word including. Uh, you can leave including unhighlighted. Okay. And so uh, I did not see any conditions in. <laughs> in our agenda, so we have no conditions to consider. So um, my motion is to remove that sentence and we can motion it back in if, we're, if we wanna make conditions. Well, we aren't going backwards. Um, so it, it stays or it goes with this vote. Okay, I motion to remove that sentence, that phrase. Okay, is there an, any, is there a second? A second. All right, Commissioner Greengold. I have a comment. Yes, um, um, Could we uh, possibly um, take out the word intense? We were taking all that out. Well, I know, but I'm. You're making a motion. Okay, never mind. To, amend it to Sorry. remove just the word intense. It's hard to follow if people don't follow the rules. Right, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I'm good with it, I'm fine, I'm fine. All right, uh, Commissioner Baral. Uh, I have no further changes uh, other than proposed. Okay, Commissioner Rutke. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, and Commissioner Black. The motion. Anything further? Um, let, me, let me read it again. <clears throat> Anything further is just about this sentence you've highlighted. Um, we need to move on. <laughs> okay. Uh, all in favor of removing this sentence? I'm putting a motion to amend my own amendment. All in favor of removing this sentence, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. Sorry, guys. I, I, uh, Let's move on to the next uh, paragraph. Wait, no. Motion to revisit that paragraph? <laughs> uh, no. Out of order. We have to move on. We have things to do, you know. It, it would help if people would look at the... Uh, have be prepared to uh, make the motions when you come to the meeting. All right, Am amendment number four. Okay, this concerns the table of uh, permitted uses. And the reason why this table gets amended is because we're creating new districts and eliminating existing districts. And uh, whenever a new district is created, we have to assign the uses to them. Um, that are allowed. So this is the chart that you've seen before and that we sent out again, uh, Sharon sent out again, excuse me. And um, it has each of the, of the new zoning categories plus the old that remain. Um, I've used color to highlight areas that are being changed. And um, I think maybe for the purpose of uh, getting through this table, we might, might best start with just the residential uses and look at those across the columns 
so that we could dispatch with all the residential uses then move to the each of the general land land use categories and if we find it doesn't work we can revisit that but um so what yes, I, may i may i ask one question before you start of course where where else besides the paragraph we looked at a few minutes ago does it discuss growth allocation districts uh in the critical area section of the zoning ordinance um i can't recall the exact section right now mr chairman but if you, you want me to find it for you no no that's fine it's fine go ahead okay continue yeah um so let's start with the RV1 and RV2. Um, previously, there was just an RV um, and proposal was to split those into RV1 and RV2. Uh, so since the RV1 is the um, more restrictive zone, I've um, made modifications to it and left the RV2 zone the way it is. Um, and so if we deal with the single family detached, we see that it's allowed uh, as a permitted use in the RV1 and RV2. Um, well, actually a more, little, little more background. The commercial zone went away and in its place, we have four separate zones. Uh, and the resource conservation district has been changed uh, somewhat. So I've highlighted, highlighted that column as well because there'll be some changes to, that, to it as well. Um, so first single family detached with respect to the, the village zone, um, the RV1 and RV2 both would permit single family detached houses. Uh, they would also be allowed in the neighborhood commercial and the town commercial zones, but they wouldn't be allowed in the commercial plaza or the maritime commercial zones. And they wouldn't be allowed in the resource conservation zone, which is a change from the current code because right now you can build a house in the resource conservation uh, district. Um, mm -hmm. So the same approach was applied to single family attached, which is typically, considered a, a townhouse. Uh, there are other forms of attached housing, but um, they're allowed in RV2 under the current code in the, in, consistent with the current comprehensive, the draft comprehensive plan, they would not be allowed in the RV1. They would not be allowed, a townhouse dwelling specifically referenced would not be allowed in RV1, um, but still would be allowed in RV2. Multifamily dwellings, which is, you know, three units or more in a building uh, would not be allowed in RV1, but would remain allowed in RV2. Uh, accessory dwellings would remain uh, as a conditional use in the RV2, and I continue that over into RV1. Uh, and dwelling unit in combination with the commercial use. I'm not quite sure why that's shown as a permitted use, except that there are a variety of commercial conditional use, but there are there are a variety of commercial uses as we'll see later that are allowed in RV now. Um, so the dwelling unit in combination with commercial use that really uh, pertains to this set of categories, the commercial categories. Uh, it was only the town commercial district that the commission um, agreed to allow commercial in combination with a I'm sorry, residential, an apartment above a commercial, let's say. So there it is, it's, it would be a conditional use in that zone. So there's the, the six principal residential uses and how the new zoning ordinance could address those. Okay, could we stop there? Is there any comment on that section of the uh, district's use. Commissioner Greengold. Uh, I'm just concerned about number six with uh, the RV2. Does this mean an extra accessory dwelling or is it the original dwelling we're talking about? I'm... So no. under, under RV2. Yeah. 
the uh, conditional use permit for, yeah, for number six. Um, dwelling unit in combination with commercial use. Does that refer to the original structure, the original house? Or does that mean somebody can build an extra, you know, outside uh, accessory building for their commercial commercial venture? Yeah, let me let me let me uh, just yeah, it, it would if you had a permitted commercial use, you could then add a residential apartment. That's what it means. So it would be. Uh, attached to the original house and it wouldn't be an extra building or what it could it be an extra building? I, um, no, it would be attached. Um, let me just get to that. So that's the only permitted commercial use is as a rental unit. Is that what you're saying? Now, uh, there are a variety of commercial uses allowed in the R2 or the, in the RV district. Um, and, okay. okay. Let's, I apologize. Let's, I thought you said rental unit. <clears throat> um, so th there's the conditions uh, from the code. Uh, and, you know, this set of changes is not suggesting any changes to the conditions. Uh, but it's just showing what the conditions are that would pertain to the use called dwelling unit in combination with commercial use. It's a conditional use of RV and the commercial zones, uh, provided adequate parking is provided for both uses. Commercial portion of such combination use shall be fully utilized uh, and not reduced uh, to, um, and commercial development shall be given priority in such combination uses and the residential portion is ancillary, which is subordinate to or secondary to or um, accessory to. Um, so. Uh, the only concern, I'm sorry, the only concern I have on this is, would we be encouraging people not to um, use some of our current commercial buildings instead buy one of these, you know, one of these places in, in the residential area and kind of make it into their commercial. I just don't want to be in, be in competition with our current commercial areas is what I'm trying to say, but you know, because we do have openings currently in our, in our commercial zones. I hate to see everybody put all their commercial ventures into uh, RV2 instead of in lieu of putting them in the commercial zones as we have them set out. So that would be my concern about number six under RV2. Right. I would be amenable to getting rid of the conditional use permit for that. I would just be wanting to say no to that. Right, and- uh, um, I, uh, That reason. Is, right. that, is that a motion you're making? Uh, I'll make a motion to remove uh, number the number six dwelling unit in combination with commercial use under RV two zoning district. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. Any discussion, Commissioner Rutke? Please. Um, I thought the discussion of RV two and commercial was was something like, um, was a very light commercial. It was something like uh, an accountant's office or a lawyer's office or something like that. Is that what we're talking about, Chris, or some of the things we're talking about? Yes, that's, that's the case. You don't see a, you, you're not suggesting there's a more intense use there? Um, or could apparently be. the code allows a, a retail uses an RV district if they have frontage onto Maryland 261. Um, so that's an, kind of an example of where if someone were operating a, well, let's say someone were, were operating a, a real estate office or a, a flower shop or florist or something like that, they could put an apartment in the second story of the, the, the building the house and, and convert the first part of the, the ground floor for the business use. 
Any further? Commissioner uh, Baral, any questions? So it, in this capacity, for example, if like right now, if, if we have the kettle corn, that would be permitted in, in that area with a, a residential component on top. Is that correct? Uh, yes, in, in that case, that's a property that's zoned, would be zoned town commercial with a new map. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, to me, that I, I, that's acceptable to me. Um, it, it allows, you know, commercial, commercial use, but it's not overzealous. Um, so. And Commissioner Blackwelder. So I have a general comment. Um, I do see what Cindy's saying and uh, wanting to target the commercial, um, the commercial opportunities into the commercial areas. And so, um, well, the one comment is, is, is we should always be looking at these in conjunction with the, the conditions alongside of them. I am not very clear about what a special exception with the condition is, or if there's any other of these um, categories that could accommodate some of the things that people are saying they, you know, we obviously want to allow without turning the residential village district into just the same as the town commercial district. Is there some way to make that distinction and maybe we should revisit just this this section and i also have a comment about um some of the other items but for this topic that's my comment i i would support sydney's motion but i do i do see um that there are people that might have a commercial use in there that it could confuse Okay, Commissioner Gringo, we're talking about your amendment to remove uh, the letter C from number six. Any further discussion? Hearing none, <clears throat> all in favor of removing the C from uh, RV2 on number six there, would you please say aye. 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 Uh, I. Uh, uh, anyone me. Me. Anyone, hey, anyone opposed? Um, uh, uh, mm, I say no. <laughs> okay, so the motion fails because we have to have four <laughs> yes votes to uh, for the motion to pass. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Commissioner Blackwelder, you had other comments you wanted to make. Yes, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so as we all know, I sent one way communication with um, a proposal to make the multifamily dwellings conditional. Um, basically, the items that were not a single family detached house, I made it, I suggested that we make them conditional. Um, and I set a list of conditions out one way and nobody responded for the record. Um, but I did request that they be included in the agenda and they're not on the agenda. I would like to make a motion to put them on the agenda so that we can discuss them. They also came along with um, a, a floating district that we could refer to that would give us some control over what got built in certain areas where there's a lot of conglomerated property and we might want to make sure that the development that goes there isn't, um, is compatible. And we do have a very, skeletal code. Um, it's a wonder that, you know, aside from some, some over intense properties, 
um, we've been a we have been able to maintain our small town charm and we have been able to um, you know keep the good bones of Chesapeake Beach intact but in order to do that going forward we need strong code and we don't have it and so I thank you, thank you for your opinion the um, uh, with regard to the floating district that you you're now proposing I would add that we are in the process of implementing the comprehensive plan that we passed. And I don't believe there was a floating district mentioned in that comprehensive plan. I'll have to do a word search, but <coughs> I'm sure that's the case. Our job is to pass to the, to the town council implementation of the comprehensive plan, which we have already passed to them. So I would say that anything that is not currently in the uh, comprehensive plan is out of order. Um, okay, well, let me, let me to, ask you this, If you Chairman want Brown. to add some uh, the uh, uh, things to the agenda, you made a motion to add your list of uh, several hundred, whatever it was, uh, items um, to the agenda. We'll put that on as soon as we finish uh, this agenda. So okay. we have a motion. Do we have a second to add? Uh, I assume everybody saw that list that Commissioner Blackwelder sent out three times to all the commissioners. Um, is there anyone that did not see that list? Hearing none, uh, we have a motion to include that list on a future agenda. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All right. All in favor, uh, is there any further discussion? No. None. <clears throat> I'd like to amend the motion to say that we would like to include it on our next agenda. I'll second the amendment. Amended. <clears throat> I'll third it. <laughs> we will finish this agenda first and then we will move to any future items. All right, so we have a, a first, second, and a third. All in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Uh, that motion passes. Okay, <clears throat> so um, was there anything else that I left out, Commissioner Blackwelder? Well, I... I <laughs> So we are writing the code to implement the comprehensive plan that we passed according to our intent. Um, and I just have a, a, a curious question because the way that I read some items in the comprehensive plan, especially in the implementation chapter is that we are um, trying to allow multi-unit affordable housing projects. Is that, is that something that in the way, and this is a question for you, Chris, is that something that if someone were to come to you with a project, you think, do you think they would read our comprehensive plan to say that we would like to do that? Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know that I, I could really answer that question in a specific way. I, I don't. I don't know what other people will think when they read the comprehensive plan. Um, I, I just can't judge what someone else might suggest or what they might see. Right, so my fear is that well, we without, have- Without a specific uh, question, the, the general question, is the world round? Will Chris answer that, but maybe. Uh, it's not really round, it's oval. Um, maybe, I don't know, but you, you have to put, you have to, uh, he has, has to have a specific proposal to give you a specific answer, I think. So it's an unfair question. Um, not really, because what we're doing here is we're writing the law that will permit the type of development that our we're town- writing, We're writing to proposals to the town council and the town council writes the law. Correct. And so That's the town enough. council should be well informed and transparent about what we're allowing to be built. And 
And there is a real danger that we are soliciting multi-unit affordable housing. <clears throat> and so I don't- you say, that... you say there's a real danger. This, this is not a debate. Please make a motion. We'll have a second. We'll allow people to comment and then we'll uh, vote on it and we'll move on. So uh, what do you have a motion? No, I made my motion and it passed. Okay, so you have nothing further? Only questions. All right, Commissioner Greengold. Um, I would like to uh, direct a question to uh, Chris on number four, multifamily dwelling under RV2. Um, is it possible to make that a conditional use permit, a C instead of a P, so that when um, somebody comes up and buys a couple properties that we could put conditions about having extra land for a little little uh, park area, or not a park area, but you know, play area for the kids, et cetera. Would it be appropriate to put a C down for RV2 on multifamily dwelling? Um, it's, it's not inappropriate, um, but there are <coughs> other standards in the code that any development would have to meet, including a multifamily. Um, uh, so by thinking, making it conditional, you placing those conditions up front uh, and you're putting conditions that otherwise would not be addressed elsewhere in the zoning ordinance. Uh, so for instance, there's uh, um, measures of intensity or density, there's landscaping, parking conditions, there's, uh, as later on we'll see, there's a proposal to require open space at a rate of 1,000 square feet per dwelling unit. Um, but if you're looking for conditions above and beyond that, uh, it's not inappropriate uh, to do that. Um, but we need to really think through what those conditions would be. Um, and, and I should say one more time for the Planning Commission that the task before us is to modify the zoning ordinance in those specific areas so that the council can move forward and address what's most pressing right now, and that's the moratorium, and that there will be time uh, to revisit the, the zoning code and address uh, things like that, uh, Cindy. So, okay. and, and that's just like the design standards. I, I think we all okay. should, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Sure. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we are, uh, we had, oh, we had a motion to, approve uh, the section one, residential uses. And we had a second, we had discussion, we had amendments. Uh, the Motion amendment to amend. Failed, as I recall. Uh, so uh, we have a motion to approve that section as written. Uh, all in favor? Motion to amend the motion. Well, I just made, I just made the decision to vote on oh. it. So. Uh, as written without Cindy's written, emotion because we had we had everybody made their motions we've had oh my god but did we vote on Cindy's motion to include a c uh, I didn't make that motion actually I just had a question for Chris so I did not make that motion I just asked him a question as well okay I would like to make that motion in case my other motions get uh bumped too far down the road I would like to make the motion to include a C instead of a P in the multifamily dwelling unit. I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, Commissioner Greengold. Uh, I just, I'm sorry. Um, it was just basically the same comments that I am concerned that townhomes town homes we already have in that area but we don't have a large apartment complex and i am concerned that if we don't have it uh have conditions that we will uh change the character of some of those neighborhoods um so that's why i think a c might be appropriate there um so there that's my my opinion about it chris could you put your cursor over the position that uh we are discussing right there Right there. Right there. So changing, changing the P is in Papa to a C is in Charlie. Is that correct, Commissioner Greengold? Yes. 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 C is in Cindy. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, Commissioner Brown. 
comments? Uh, no, I have no comment. I, I, I agree. Uh, Commissioner Rutke. <clears throat> I have a question of Chris. What is it that you said we could control that's already on the books? Lighting, landscaping? L lighting, landscaping, <clears throat> the amount of open space, um, the amount of land per dwelling unit, the arrangement of the building relative to other buildings. Uh, and once you adopt design standards, the, the design of it, the height of the building, uh, stormwater management, open space, you can, just, you can address all those issues through the current code. Um, all right. If you have anything specifically special that rises to a, a level of public interest, uh, then you could do with a, a, a C or conditional use, but uh, you would need to have those conditions. Um, there is no such thing as a conditional use, just absent conditions. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's permitted. Even as a C, it's still permitted. It's permitted with conditions. There's no question about whether it's permitted or not. It's, it's allowed. Uh, and it would be allowed according to the standards that are already in the code. So Chris, this is Commissioner Burrell. For a point of clarification, with the P in multifamily dwelling, it, there are conditions that it, it has to meet anyway with the P. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, the conditions are, let's call them standards. They're standards in the zoning ordinance and requirements that are required to be met. In the, with the P? Yes, and, and, and it goes to your, you for site plan review. So- oh, Okay, now, right. if, uh, could I just ask one other question? If we change that to C, then why wouldn't we then change the townhouse dwelling? Because on that same, using the same, um, you know, thinking. I, I see the point you're making. So Kathleen, I agree that we should change um, all of the higher intensities of housing. And that's what I proposed in my one-way email. Um, the, the standards that are in the code now, um, they're written predominantly for, for smaller lots, not for large projects. And most places that, that um, you know, have a lot of consolidated or um, I guess a great deal of property, they, like the RPC, there's, there's a whole set of additional regulations beyond the standards and the setbacks and, and such that large parcels, large developments, um, you know, bigger, more impactful projects get more attention. And that, that's as it should be because they are bigger and more impactful. Um, and I don't think that our standard setbacks and um, requirements really adequately address the more intense housing. Uh, can I ask? Can, yeah, Chairman Brown, focus, may I ask it? Oh. Yeah, Commissioner Rutke, uh, you're up next, but if we could focus on the amendment that's uh, been proposed, which is to change uh, the P is in Papa that's highlighted to a C is in Charlie and not divert all over the landscape as uh, some of you do. But would, Chairman Brown. Appreciate. Commissioner Rutke, you are up. Yeah, um, <clears throat> if I'm out of line, I'm sure you'll tell me. Um, if we change that to a, first of all, if we change the P to a C, uh, Chris, yes. do we need to right now come up with the conditions? I mean, what, well, what other um, can- You have to ask yourself, um, yeah, what are you, what, could, what conditions would you entertain? Um, because you might say we'd like to make it a C, um, but we want Chris to come up with conditions that address certain issues. Um, but as I said, I also just I need to correct something that Lori said. The smaller projects are treated the same. They 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 go through the same process. The standards apply to them equally. Standards apply within the zoning code equally. Everyone's treated with equal protection. 
uh, and, oh, and when zoning comes to play. So uh, I, I don't want the commissioners to think that what she said was accurate. Um, it's not. Whether this should be P or C though is a matter for your deliberation. Um, if it's C, we need to take time to come up with conditions that are responsive to any particular concerns you might have. Uh, Chairman Unless Brown. Commissioner Sorry. Lucky, please. Yeah, I, I would like to ask Lori by way of explanation so that we can sort of hash this out. What is not included in the standards that Chris has told us about that you would like to see, or, or excuse me, that you would like to have some control over? What's not covered? Um, so I think in a, in a large project, so say you have setbacks and it's for a single family lot. You have uh, you know, a frontal setback, a side setback, a back setback. Um, and imagine you have multiple single family houses. Um, all those get a, a setback. And so that, that creates a certain amount of open space just in of it being a setback um, and the dwelling needing to go inside of those setbacks and not infringing on them. Well, once you combine lots and you have a bigger space, if you apply an eight foot setback in a you know, 20,000 square foot building, as opposed to you know, a smaller structure, the impact is a lot different. So the setbacks for a multi-unit building would have to be much different than a setback for a single family dwelling. Um, and so that's just one example of this, the code standards that are that would need to be adjusted as a project gets more and more intense. Does that answer your question? And just to just to um, comment on what Chris said, I wasn't suggesting that people weren't fair to single family residents or that something wasn't fair. That what I just explained to Jan was was what my comment was about. And so Commissioner Rugby, uh, you, uh, uh, that answer your question? I guess my question is back to Chris uh, with something that Lori brought up. And that is if, uh, if, so, if a developer bought three houses in a row and they were gonna build a larger structure, a single structure where the three were, would the setbacks be the same? Uh, well, let's have a look. Remember, there's, there's setbacks that are standard and as applied. Um, so uh, this, let me get to the section here. Um, <clears throat> so the standards are, in the current case, RV, the minimum setback is 15 feet um, front yard setback. Um, and it would apply re regardless of the use that was permitted unless there were specific conditions otherwise. So 15 foot setback would apply. Eight foot is on the side, 20 from the rear. Hmm, okay. I think it's also important that we aren't dealing with uh, this potential uh, four lot complex in isolation. We've got uh, other requirements, which we're, we're talking about later on, which are residential developments uh, provide um, uh, adequate space uh, for recreation and other things. So that it isn't just the setbacks that they would have to satisfy. They'd have to satisfy parking, have to satisfy uh, uh, the open the space new, new yeah. requirements that we're talking about for uh, um, uh, recreation. So uh, I, I think it's wrong for us to, to, to deal with this in isolation. Okay. Mr. Chairman, what, what I would suggest is that <coughs> that it, it's not, as I said, it's not 
um, inappropriate to have a condition for multifamily dwellings. Um, but the, the conditions ought to be related to the potential impact of a multifamily dwelling in that particular zoning or, or district in a very specific way, not abstractly. Um, and that they, um, they ought to speak to compatibility because that's what the plan, or, or in Kathleen's words, harmoniousness. And so, you know, essentially there's a finding of compatibility so that you could have four dwelling units in a place where only two, two were, and you can have a very harmonious type of design and building, even if it's 15 feet from the front yard setback. But, but I also want to highlight that even though it says 15 foot uh, setback, we align setbacks relative to the setbacks of the other houses on either side. So there's a lot embedded into this. And I, what I want to caution you to do is not come up with conditions without a really thoughtful analysis of it. And as I said, this is not right now where we are in the planning process. Like if, if that's where you wanna be, we should advise the mayor and town council that we're not gonna deliver the full set of, of these changes because it's gonna take a considerable amount of time and dialogue. And you'll see me presenting illustrations and elevations and I mean, it's, it's much more complex than um, than you might think and to get it right. Um, right, and the alternative though, is that we put a P in there and somebody rolls in with a site plan under the P and we have okay, no- Okay, Commissioner Blackwell there, please, uh, we'll, we'll recognize you if you, in, in proper turn. I think uh, Mr. Jakubiak makes an excellent point. We need to, communicate with the town council when we expect to complete the actions which we recommended in our comprehensive plan, which are 11 zoning code amend text amendments and five map amendments. And, uh, uh, and we, we have a motion no. on so the table for a seat. Would you, would you please, please let me finish? Thank you. Um, so we need to, we need to decide when we're gonna complete this project, when we're gonna shoot for completing it and not make this uh, full employment for the next couple of years. So um, I would ask that the commission commit, or I would make a motion that the commission commit to completing uh, what we recommended in the comprehensive plan under, uh, implementation chapter uh, by the end of the next uh, 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 planning and zoning meeting in April. So I make that motion. Will anybody second it? I'll second that motion. But we still have Lori's motion on the floor. <laughs> we still have Lori's motion. Discussion. Commissioner Rutke, any comments? No, I think- Are we considering? The one that came first or the one that came second? We still have Lori's motion on the floor. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh, All right, Commissioner Blackwelder's motion is to change the P to a C. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of changing the P to a C, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Or nay. <laughs> all right. So, we don't, so the motion, uh, so let's get a count of who said aye, who, who uh, agreed with changing it to a, a C. I change. Okay, Commissioner Greengold and Commissioner Blackwelder. And I assume then that Commissioner Baralt and Commissioner Rutke oppose, correct? That's correct. correct. Okay, thank you. So the motion fails. Now, I have a motion that we complete 
this work, which is, um, I believe you have it all in today's agenda. Um, is that correct, Chris? Everything is there that you yes. think is required to complete yes. the immediate actions? Yes. All right, that we complete the uh, agenda that uh, uh, we have before us, which does not include Commissioner Blackwelder's uh, follow-on agenda, that we complete that by the end of the next meeting with a resolution to the town council that uh, uh, these are our uh, immediate actions that we recommend. So that's my motion. Do I have I a second? I seconded the motion. Okay, Commissioner Greengold seconded the motion. Any discussion, Commissioner Rutke? No, no, no discussion, okay, sir. Commissioner Blackwelder? I would like to ask Chris the question, how much, if we, if we pass this next meeting with the piece, as is with all of your recommendation, how much multi-unit affordable housing can we build in Chesapeake Beach? Chris, you think on that for a minute. Uh, Commissioner Barral, any uh, comments on the motion? No, I- By April. I, I support the motion. Okay, and Commissioner Greengold, any- any further thoughts? No. Okay. And uh, uh, Mr. Jakubiak, do you have an answer to Commissioner Blackwelder's question? No, I don't have an answer for that. It is an open-ended question. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, Commissioner Blackwelder, uh, any other comments? I would like to comment, unless we know what's being built, and unless we're preventing the type of development that we don't want to build, we are not protecting small town charm and we are not protecting our elected officials because they will get fried at the voting booth. We already have a lot of attention on over intense development that people are unsatisfied with. And then those elected officials ran on small town charm in response to a groundswell of dissatisfaction with development in our town that was the result of the current code and the current planning and zoning administration processes. And so to rush through code that's going to allow what we don't want is very unwise for everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you for your comment. I would simply add that uh, the town council has the opportunity to change the code however they like after they get our recommendations. And so they're big boys, they can uh, protect themselves, yeah. they know what they have to do. So all in favor of uh, completing the work on today's agenda, which including a resolution forwarding to the town council these zoning changes, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay, uh, Commissioner Blackwell, there's opposed. Uh, Commissioner Rutke, are you opposed also? Yes, I am. Okay, so. I want plenty of time right. to do what we need to do. Okay, well, I will relay to the town council in my report for April that they'll get it when we finish it and no sooner. Um, <laughs> all right, it is uh, three minutes to nine. As I say every time, I will make a motion at this time to adjourn until April. Uh, is there a second to adjourn? Oh, yes. All right, we have a second. <laughs> is there any discussion? Uh, I, would, I would like to suggest that we try Mr. and- Mr. Blackwelder. I'll go with the- No discussion, here. Commissioner <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would I would like to ask Jan if she has another uh, maybe 15 minutes to try and get through a little bit more of this so that we can try and get as far through this as we can. If we could do at least another 15 to a half an hour, 
I think it could go faster. I think the first part was the hardest. Is it 15 minutes or a half hour? I would say 30 minutes. Does Jan have 30 minutes in her? <laughs> Just 30 minutes. <laughs> well, the question is, are you, you're proposing an amendment to- I would like to amend. 930. Do we have a second to adjourn at 9.30? I second it. All right. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor of adjourning at 9.30, please say aye. 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 Commissioner Rutke, what was your vote? No. Okay, the motion does not <laughs> pass. <laughs> motion does not pass. Uh, Commissioner Baralt, Blackwell, they're in green gold, were in favor. Commissioner Rutke said no. Uh, we need four to pass any motion. So uh, the original motion was to adjourn at nine. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, all opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, we have three opposed. Uh, Brown. One in favor. We have, uh, was that Sharon that I hear? No, it's Kathleen. Kathleen, okay, Kathleen, go ahead. Chairman Brown, I'd like to offer an amendment for Jan. Do you have 15 minutes in you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can. All right, may I make a comment, please? I'm yeah, looking at the material that, thank you, Chairman, I'm sorry. Um, I'm looking at what we have left. And, you know, I don't know if we can get it done in half an hour. Um, and we still have another whole meeting. So I'm, I guess I'm just not understanding why we need to plow through this right this minute. I mean, I'm not, yeah, that's my statement. Okay, that's your statement. Uh, we don't have any motions on the floor. We are still in session. So uh, uh, we'll continue on. If, uh, <laughs> if Commissioner Rutke were to adjourn, then we would uh, have to adjourn because, uh, well. No, I, I, I'm not gonna do that. And uh, let's mush on with All a, right. with a with a time limit, please. <clears throat> okay, well, we will reconsider this at 9.15. Uh, please, uh, Chris, could you go to the next session? Okay, uh, the next group of um, uses are institutional, recreational, and educational uses. And they go down to there. Um, so use number eight through 16. And um, let me take that off. Okay. So the public and private schools are currently permitted as special exceptions with conditional conditions uh, in the RV zone. So again, just to make them consistent, I because I'm not opening, I didn't intend to open up specific standards or conditions. I just wanted to create the new district, you know? So- Okay, so Chris, if I could maybe shorten this. Uh, where, where RV1 and RV2 are the same, it represents what it was before, correct? Right, right. So we only need to look at those where there is a difference between the two, if you want to explain that, that thinking. A yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, okay. Um, then. Can, Chris, can we go to number seven? I, I know you, 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 you skipped oh, number I skipped seven. seven. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just, the, to the churches in place of worship. So you, uh, so far we have that allowed in every category, basically. Except right. you have the special con exceptions. What would the special exceptions be in the, uh, First two categories. Okay. Um, um, by the way, um, just before we get to that, does everyone know what a special exception is and why it's relevant? I, I, maybe I could take just a moment to explain that since you're looking. Yeah, at I'd like you. I'd exception. like you to, Chris. <clears throat> as well. okay. So it's really important to think of the special exception as another type of permitted use. Um, so in this case public and private schools are permitted uses 
in those zoning or, or yeah or churches sorry Cindy are permitted uses in those zoning districts um, but in those two particulars that are residential low density medium density they're permitted a special exceptions meaning that they the applicant has to go to the board of zoning appeals and petition the board for approval of the use um, and the approval is a, the the review is essentially about impact. What is the impact to adjoining properties at that very particular specific location, and can the impact be properly mitigated by the plan that's proposed? You know, it's really an impact analysis essentially. Uh, and if the board of appeals approves it, then it comes to you as a site plan. And if you remember, that's exactly the process the town followed with respect to the elementary school. Beach Elementary uh, was a residential zone and uh, the proposal was to expand, build a new school. And uh, so it was a special exception. There was no question about whether it was permitted. The question was whether it was, um, if its impacts at that location uh, were properly dealt with. Um, there's a more kind of detailed legal standard, but that's the, issue, it's issue of impact. An impact evaluation has to take place at the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so why, when, when, so when we say it's SC, we're saying special exception with conditions. So not only do you have to meet all the basic, you know, conditions related to protecting health, safety, morals, general welfare, you have, like the board would normally do, the board has to apply a number of other specific conditions. And those are in the zoning ordinance in section 11 of article three. And let's go to the, here where they are, item C. Let me know when, Cindy, when you have, you have it up on your screen. I, I do, make, I do. Let me make it a little larger for everybody. Um, okay. Um, the minimum lot area shall be one acre. Oh, okay. The lot width shall be 200 feet. No part of any building shall be located within 50 feet of adjoining lot line in separate ownership. Uh, building coverage shall not exceed 25%. Uh, there's screening and buffering, uh, adequate parking, obviously. Um, and then this statement relates to housing for religious personnel. So essentially we're saying that if you build a church in uh, those conditions, have to be met. It, it needs to be a sizable land uh, area. And it's enough to mitigate the impacts that the church would have on adjoining residences. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I was curious about the SC in particular. Um, I know I, I used to live near a, it wasn't a church, it was a place of worship and people use the place of worship idea to make it into what they kind of want <laughs> and I used to live near one of these and it I had to move <laughs> I had to move away the noise and it was really hard to control the uh the impacts even though I'm sure they had conditions on them in this particular location but um I was just very concerned about what the SC was and the uh and the low density and mid density, and then uh, the conditionals in the RV1 and RV2, because there, I mean, the, the, an acre of land is a considerable amount. I'm not sure if there's any lot around that has an acre of land available uh, for something like that. Um, but okay, but thank you for explaining the SC. I, I was just concerned about that. Okay, sure. Chris? Yes, Kathleen. Um, yes. Um, I just wanted to clarify on number 11, um, as Chairman Brown said that everything appears the same um, previously. There isn't any type of category under RV1 for number 11. So what was the previous? Oh, um, so if you look at, um, I made a mistake. That should be SC2. That, oh, okay. consistent with my logic, that should have been SC2. So SC as well. Okay. Um, so that's what I, I did there. All right, thank you. 
And Chris, what's the difference between a home daycare and a daycare, which is nine and 10? Yeah, um, the conditions um, are, are different. And you know, in this case, the code actually defines the terms through the conditions that are applicable. Um, so if we go to home daycare item E in the zoning ordinance, I'm gonna move it over for you. Um, versus home or versus daycare center, the daycare center or nursery school is a little more intensive okay. and it has to have a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet and the lot width has to be bigger. Okay. Home daycare can basically operate it out of someone's house as is okay. traditionally the case. Okay, thank you. Sure. And uh, another question, Chris, do we want to have like number 11, the professional school in the MC as, I mean, is that, is that a, a maritime uh, district <laughs> use a professional studio for music or art? I don't know, maybe it is, maybe that would be fine. I don't now, know. Cindy, I, uh, Chairman Brown? Yes, go or, ahead. Or maybe I, should, maybe I should be asking uh, Chris, are you ready for discussion of, of those other uh, you know, like the Marine commercial, because I have a number of things that I would like to talk about, but we're not even finished with RV one and two, are we? Um, so you're still asking questions about the table before you make any specific motions. So I, if I can help you, that's fine. We can move, it's, if I'm okay with that. I, as we move down the table, the hopscotch through hit this. As long as we stay on the institutional recreational educational section. Uh, Commissioner Rutke, so what, what are your questions if you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, I, I'm concerned with a number of things that are permitted in marine commercial. Um, permitted as a daycare center or nursery school. I just don't see that as appropriate and what, what we've discussed we hope to see there. Um, I also have, hang on one second here, orphanage, nursing home, and other licensed establishments for old people like me. That would be <laughs> nice. It would be nice to be in the maritime area, but I just don't know that that is what we are envisioning for that area. Um, and there's another one, and that is on the first page. I don't see a church or a place of worship there either. I, I, it just doesn't seem appropriate, and I'll leave it at that. Don't you want to look at the water, Jan, in your old age home? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just doesn't seem appropriate to me. I, you know, maybe I'm off base, but you asked, so I'm telling you. I, I agree. I've looked at that uh, maritime district, and it just seems like we've got too many uses that make that don't make sense. So I, I, I wouldn't mind just going down that whole district and just going through each district and just saying yeah, you're nay to the different options. Would that be easy, Chris? If we just did it that way, because <laughs> um, we we can now know that the maritime we're looking at that maritime, and that's the one that really uh, you know comes forward mostly to me is, is that one. And it's a much smaller area now. Uh, and it's a commercial zone rather than a in the mixed use uh, zone it was prior. Um, yeah, it se seems to me that it, uh, it, it's not like we are investing in those areas and saying these are the we're going to, we're not going to, we're not going to build a daycare center, but we will build a, uh, uh, a restaurant or something that what we're, I think what the code is pointed at is to give developers an option. We don't know what people would find economic or doable in that section, and they'll compete for the property by the price that it's uh, offered at. Uh, and we want um, some development there, uh, or, or, or we could just eliminate this code and say, uh, freeze everything as it is, you can rebuild what's there, nothing new. I, I, 
I think we need to Chairman Brown somewhat to the marketplace to uh, to decide what an investor uh, is willing to invest in and give them some options for what they would uh, be willing to build. Well, Chairman Brown, I would agree with you, except that we didn't want residential dwelling, and yet we are willing to consider orphanage, nursing home, uh, care for the aged, et cetera. I thought part of the reason we didn't want it there was that it was, it's hardly maritime related, but I thought it was that we didn't want people living in an area that was potentially so flood likely. Well, then and maybe we, we should declare me. the area as a, a, a no build area because it, it will potentially flood. I mean- um, No, I'm talking living there versus commercial, um, water related, that sort of thing. People living there is a very different concept in that area than I thought we had envisioned. Maybe I'm off base, so I'm, oh, I'm no, just- no, yeah, to, we're, to trying to, we're trying to work, what it, you're the commission, you're, uh, you have a motion uh, for changing it. So may I comment, Chairman Brown? Well, can I get Commissioner Rutke's response? She has several ideas. She doesn't- You're think looking for me to make a motion? Oh, yeah, would you make a motion that you wanna eliminate or change or- Yes, I absolutely do. Okay. Um, in the Marine Commercial District, I would propose the following, that number seven, not be a permitted use, that's churches, places of worship, et cetera, that, Let's see, where am I? Hang on. Okay, so and certainly not- Can these as we go through, please? So, I beg your pardon? Uh, I'm asking Chris if he would highlight oh. them as you talk about them so we can identify the motion. All right. Where was I? Okay, so number seven, I would remove permission for that. Um, and I guess the other one that really bothers me, there are a couple of others that, I'm sorry, excuse me. And I also propose to remove permitted on number 15, which is orphanage, nursing home, et cetera. Okay, so those, those two. Yes, any, sir. Any others? No, no others? <laughs> well, I have a wish list, but those are the two uh, Primary thing. All right. 10? So that's that's the motion. Do we have 10? a second? Ten. Oh. Daycare center. Daycare Excuse center. me. That is circled on my on my page here. Yes, number ten. I don't think that's appropriate either. Okay. So that's my motion. Seven, Do ten, we have and fifteen removed as a permitted thing. A second. Okay, we have a second. Uh, any other discussion on that? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of changing those or uh, just what deleting them entirely. So all oh, in favor for, the, of for the Marine commercial, yes. I well, second. I. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Gold <laughs> says aye. Commissioner Blackwelder says aye. Commissioner Grohl says aye. Okay, and Commissioner Rutke says hell yes. All right. So I'm uh, sorry, uh, it's I, Jan. <laughs> okay, Kathleen. <laughs> All right. So motion passes. Uh, now, Commissioner Blackwelder had some comments. I can hold my comments. All right, so um, is there any other observations on this section that we want to deal with? Um, can we go to RV1? Can we go to RV1? Thank you. Uh, on uh, RV1, I had a question on, uh, uh, um, let me just go through my, my chart here. Uh, number 22, which is retail establishments carry one type of interrelated good, 
that should not be an RV1. <coughs> Can we stick to institutional uses? Oh, I'm sorry. You want to stay with institutional uses. OK. If it's OK. Uh, RV1, I had. Um, Okay, so okay, so number eleven you have down as special as SC. Okay, then you know what? If you're just going down institutional uses, the RV one, I'm okay with RV one. No, Chris said he left out SC for number eleven in RV one. Right, but it typically has. Oh, okay, all right. So you're leaving out SC. Okay, very good. Okay, so the SC does not. Ha is not in RV1. Okay, very good. No, okay. no, the intent no. here is that SC would, would be in RV1, just like it's currently in RV, it would remain in RV1. Oh, that's what I thought you said. That's what I thought yeah, you number, said. Number eight and number 11, Cindy, would be SC. Right. Uh, right. Um, the... Um, the uh, daycare set, the number 10 in RV1, I would be concerned about. Um, I don't know if we have an area that would be large enough for that daycare center nursery school, but I would think that that would be um, something that would not, not be compatible in an RV1 situation at all. Home daycare, yes, not the RV1. Because of the the I don't care how far away you put uh, playgrounds, they're very noisy. You got a lot of uh, intense impact with tra with uh, drivers, et cetera, cars. So I can't imagine why there's even a C on RV one. Okay, so we have a motion from. Well, Chris I'm not done. I'm also I'm, the C from uh, and number, uh, and number and ten tw in RV one. Is that and correct? Number and number twelve also, library, museum, community center in RV one. I would also want to eliminate that as well. All right, so we have a motion to remove those two. Do we have a second? I second it. All right, uh, any other, any discussion? Commissioner Baralt. No, I have no discussion. Okay, Commissioner Blackwell. I think that makes sense. Commissioner Rutke. Yes, it makes sense to me as well. Commissioner Greengold, you proposed it. Makes sense to you, right? Yes, thank you. <coughs> uh, move to a motion. All in favor of those changes, please say aye. 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 Vote is unanimous. Is there any other comments on this section? I have a comment. Commissioner Blackwelder. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Um, I think that um, one of the reasons we're removing some stuff from um, some of the commercial areas is just to make room for things that we want. And so I'm looking at the commercial plaza and I'm seeing orphanage, nursing home, other licenses established. And I don't think that's appropriate place for, um, I don't think the commercial plaza is an appropriate place for that either. Um, as well as a daycare, nursery school. Um, it's not a good place for a library. Is this the TC you're talking about or the, uh, which, uh, which uh, commercial plaza, uh, commercial center are you talking about? The CP, the commercial plaza. So I would oh, say, you know, okay. a lot of things. So commercial, commercial plaza related is to eliminate a lot of things from that column. Okay. I'm going down the list. Daycare. I would like to eliminate daycare. Uh, could you do them by the numbers? So that... Oh, I'm sorry. Number 10. Mm -hmm. um, 12. <clears throat> a public building should be small so I'll leave that 14 there's the one under 14 doesn't have a number 
And then the one after that is 15. <sighs> oh, that's not already not there. Um, and then 15. <laughs> I see number 16 and I didn't realize it was in this section, but I have a lot of questions about number 16. So I would like to reserve discussion of number 16 across the board until next meeting. So what we have on proposed right now is what? Um, the highlight, thank you, Chris, the highlighted keys in the commercial plaza. The red? Yes. yes. All right, the red P's in that column are proposed to be eliminated and leave the column blank. Is that correct? Yes. All right, do we have a second? I second it. Okay, uh, any other discussion on those items? Um, I, you know, the, the commercial plaza uh, we have is the one that we have at Rollins. Okay, so that's a pretty large area. I could see us putting a ballet because you have <laughs> you have number eleven. I'm sorry. Yeah, number. I'm sorry. You don't have number. Is eleven the? <laughs> uh, it's so little. I can't hardly see it here. Did you mark number eleven as one that you were going to uh, remove? Yeah. There you go. Okay, I I disagree with that because I think having a little studio up there on top of where Verizon used to be, or you know, on that second story, I think they could use a little studio up there for music. That'd I agree. Be, that'd be a great place for something like that. So I disagree with the number eleven. So you're proposing okay. to amend it to delete to leave eleven as it is. Yes, 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 sir. Okay, and you had others. Um. Uh, no, I think, uh, you know, that would be it. it would be for, for that one for me, number 11. Okay, do we have a second on that amendment? I second. I second. All right, uh, all in favor of the amendment, uh, number 11, leaving it uh, permitted. Aye. 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 Okay, uh, all in favor. Now, the basic... Uh, uh, motion was to remove the other three, which is private clubs, orphanages, and daycare centers from the uh, commercial plaza. I don't hear any other further discussion, so put it to a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Commissioner Blackwelder, did I? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Aye. All right, all in favor. Now, um, the other comments about this section were on group homes. Commissioner Blackwelder. I would like to move that we discuss group homes next time when, when people aren't tired. Okay. Um, well, we can have, I, I'm sorry. Can I, can I assume, uh, assuming is a bad word, but that we have completed everything up to item number 28 on our list? I actually have one I'd like to include in the Maritime District. I know that sounds very odd. Uh, is it possible to add? Okay, now I'm not really, I'm kind of confused about number 12. But 12, where it says game, wildlife, and nature preserves, that part I would like to have uh, as a permitted use in the maritime district. So, and the, and the one above that in black. So the environmental science research and educational uses nature center and the game, wildlife, and nature. I'd like to put that in, well, I guess it has the P on the environmental science, but it doesn't have the permitted use on the game, wildlife, and nature preserves. Chris, do you see what I'm saying? We are right there, there you go. Okay, do, do, we have, do we have a second? There you go. I second it. All right, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion? Yes, uh, Chairman Brown. Commissioner uh, Peralt. Peralt. Can Chris, can you um, give me an idea of what game, wildlife, and nature preserves would entail? Um, 
it could, could be a, a small petting zoo. Uh, it could be a, um, in, in more rural locations, it could be, um, you know, clay shooting uh, zone. Um, it, it could be a fishing uh, area. It could be um, uh, uh, the raising of uh, oysters and other types of uh, aquatic wildlife. Um, Are there a, is there a size um, constraint to that requirement? No. Okay. I mean, in the abstract, no, but of course you'd still have it before you in front of the planning commission and you'd have to review it and think through it. Yeah, the it. preserve just strikes me as being large, but I, I, I just was, okay. Uh, right, just so for context, the, the map here shows the, the maritime commercial zone. Um, and that's, is that what we're referring to adding it to? Yes. So it's a uh, it encompasses on the east side uh, the shoreline along the rod and reel and extends all the way due down and encompasses Abner's and then it encompasses the Fishing Creek Marina and some vacant parcels associated with that. So it's a rather small um, area or limited area, I should say, not necessarily small. Okay. Uh, does anyone else uh, have a comment on this? proposal. Hearing none, all in favor of changing game, wildlife, and nature preserves to permitted in the maritime uh, district. So aye. Say aye. 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 No. <laughs> okay, motion fails. Uh, uh, we had three votes. Aye. Commissioner Blackwell, there's no. Okay, that goes away, Chris. The P goes away. <laughs> uh, All right. did, Mr. Chairman, I need, I need to know, I, Sharon, I guess would have the answer, but I need to know now, what did you decide with respect to 14 and 15? Were they uh, within the commercial plaza zone? Are they to be eliminated? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Got it. Chairman Brown. Uh, yeah, just a second. Let's, let's oh. clean this up. It's uh, yeah. the bewitching hour. <laughs> yeah. uh, I shouldn't have said it that way. But uh, in any you know, case, that's, you're getting that's a little time personal. Of night. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, be, we need to make sure we have uh, we are clear with Chris what we have finished, so we can move on at the next meeting. So those. Those red uh, letter P's, uh, those should all be black. Blank. There, right. There's a blank. There's a fine line that runs through them, and they're yes, they would be blank in the table. But okay. I'm, I'm just keeping okay. a record of what your decisions were. Okay. All right. So uh, those that are red will be eliminated, and the the box will be empty. Right. All right. Uh, that, and yes. we will, and we would continue if we adjourn the next meeting with group home number 16. Um, right. Okay. I just wanted to go over number 12 if we have a moment, just one minute on RV one and two. 12, do we want a, a museum and a community center in our residential areas? Number 12, museum and community center. Uh, just seems like it doesn't sound like the right thing to do there, but that's a pretty public space for residential areas. Number 12, museum, library, museums, community centers, adult education centers. Well, I don't know if you've visited the museum in North Beach, but it, uh started out as uh, in a house and is now, uh, I'm not sure if it's two lots or uh, what, but it's relatively inconspicuous, uh, two stories 
uh, in the middle right. of the community. Um, if such a use would have to come to the planning and zoning, is that correct, Chris? Yeah, that would trigger a site plan review. So, uh, so right. this would be the last bite at that apple. I just think it doesn't, it just does not seem like in our RV one and two, especially RV one, I can't imagine any, uh, I, I know the one you're talking about North Beach, um, Mr. Brown, but it really is more in a in an isolated area or not as much residential area, if I'm thinking of the same. All right, so, so you're making a motion to delete that from those uh, two. I am, I, I am, Bailey. Do we I have a second? Lunch. Yes. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'm so torn about that one because... <laughs> Okay, so Just we have because, no second. So you know, it, it means, nobody, if nobody feels strongly. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I think where we were is we were at uh, number twenty-eight. I did, uh, Chris. The 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 right between fourteen and fifteen. Should that have a number? Yeah, it, it, it would have a number once we codified this. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. So you just make it sequential. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, it is nine thirty-four. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I second that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. I'll make somebody yeah. happy here today. <laughs> uh, we already discussed this. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Now we do have uh, uh, one thing that on the agenda, if there's any public comment, but it looks like most of the public has left. Is there anyone that wants to comment? They're down at the rod and reel. <laughs> All right. That's right. Okay. Listen, listening in. All right, hearing done. Uh, uh, I have a public comment. All right, Commissioner Blackwelder is putting on her public comment. <laughs> Um, I, first of all, I, I shouldn't have motion to adjourn because I meant to ask, what is our plan for the public hearing? And um, I did, <laughs> I wrote some letters, Larry wrote some letters, um, people wrote letters. I, my letters were put out publicly as public comments. And um, I didn't intend for them to be public comments when I wrote them, but they are now public comments and there are some spots in them that I intend to highlight as a public commenter. So uh, to, answer, to answer your first question, we don't, the commission does not have a role in the town council's public hearing. So okay. as I, I believe Chris, will be presenting at the uh, town council, but Chris works for the town council, but the commission does not have a role. You can, you can attend, participate in person or online as you feel, but you'll be as representing yourself and not the commission. Correct. Um, so I, yeah, I just wanted to, to let everybody know that and then also ask what our role was going to be which you say is nothing. So there's no other additional responsibilities. I can attend and comment how I choose and where I choose, correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. That's uh, useful information to the other commissioners. All right. Uh, I believe we voted to adjourn. So thank you very much. We'll see you next month. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.